I've mentioned in the past that when I look at the collections of koans, I'm looking for some sort of resonance. I'm not a koan practitioner per se, and I'm not a koan scholar. So I'm looking for something that speaks to me in a way that, not necessarily in a way that I understand, but that feels alive. It feels like it wakes something up. So sometimes I'll encounter one and I'll think, oh, I have a, like I have a take on that. I, I, I have a spin that I can offer. Some of them are just funny and that pulls me in. And then some of them get a kind of emotional response from me that I find myself wanting to unpack. Today, I want to talk about one of those. This is, like so many of the good ones, really short. This is case 44 from Dogen's collection of koans. It goes like this. Guishan sat on the teaching seat. A monastic came up and said, Master, please expound the Dharma for the assembly. Guishan said, I have already exhausted myself for you. And the monastic bowed. That's it. So again, a really easy scene. This is a monastery. There's an assembly of monks and there's a teaching seat. And Guishan, who has sat in that seat thousands of times, takes that seat, which is his role. And then we understand that he doesn't say anything. He's just sitting. And so a monk comes up and says, Master, being very polite, would you please expound the Dharma for the assembly? And Guishan looks at this monk and says, I have already exhausted myself for you. And the monk hears this and just bows. There's something so poignant in this moment. What we understand to be a younger practitioner and an older practitioner. And they're having a really important conversation. The younger monk, the monk who is asking him to speak, is doing everything right. right? He's approaching, he's being so polite. And he's asking Guishan to do something that Guishan has been doing. He's asking Guishan to do the thing that people expect. And Guishan replies in this way as to say, is it not enough? And the monk understands something and retreats. There are a lot of levels on which to talk about this exchange, this very brief moment between two people. One of them is maybe the surface one. We imagine that Guishan has been talking for years, decades. Right? And he's asked to talk again. And he says, no. I've said everything there is to say. I don't have any more than this. That's one way. And, and it's not a bad way. I've spoken to this before, but in my experience, most teachers are not trying to unpack some encyclopedic knowledge of Buddhism. 
They're not trying to offer a curriculum in Zen. They're just trying to say a couple things. They're trying to describe something that they've tasted. And the depth of the teaching over time is not that they keep adding to it. It's not that it keeps getting bigger and bigger in scale, but simply that they keep trying to find a new way to describe this taste. Here, Guishan is an old man. And so maybe one way to understand this is to say, I've said, I've said what I have to say. Most of what we need to know to undertake Zen practice, it doesn't even fill a page. So why keep talking about it? That's one. There's another way that we can imagine this story taking on meaning. where we consider that, that asking for anything at all shows a misunderstanding. As hard as Guishan may have tried over his lifetime to explain something, he knows, and he probably knows better at the time of this encounter than he ever has in his life, because it's decades upon decades of failure he knows that nothing he is saying matters that much. If we look at all the koans, if we look at the entire history of Zen, if we read the transmission of the lamp, which describes the transmission encounters along the way, there is not one moment in which a student asked for an explanation of Zen and a teacher gave a straightforward answer and the problem was solved. Not one. It's not for lack of trying. If there is an answer, if there is something that breaks someone through to a new way of holding this same moment. It never comes in the form of a clear explanation. It usually arrives in the intensity of the question. And so the person sitting in the teaching seat is in a very awkward place. They know that the best Dharma talk they can give, the most inspiring, the clearest one, at best serves as encouragement in someone else's question. But it never, never, never delivers the answer. So this monk comes to Guishan and he says, please explain it to us. Because he doesn't know. He hasn't yet sat on that seat. He doesn't know what Guishan can't do. So he goes and he asks the impossible. Guishan finally says, no, that isn't how this works. We can extend that version even further to recognize that the Dharma is teaching in everything that we see, in everything that we do, in every encounter. And so going to Guishan and saying, please teach me the Dharma, 
It's like walking up to the ocean and saying, teach me the Dharma and waiting for it to say something back. Except Guishan has the, the gift of a mouth to say, I've been teaching it the whole time. Notice. Notice what this is. Notice what's going on. There's a saying that bodhisattvas lead from the front and they don't look back. Meaning that the bodhisattva doesn't have to engage in the delusion of leading. The bodhisattva's job is not to get behind other people and push and say, it's this way. No, 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 it's this. The bodhisattva's job is not to lead from the front and then turn around all the time and say, are you with me? Are you still here with me? As if the thing that they're offering is the thing that someone needs. As if there's a me and a you, a teacher and a student. The bodhisattva walks the bodhisattva path, period. When you see someone who is walking in a direction you want to go, you walk alongside them. You say, can I join you? And the bodhisattva, every time, will say, yes, of course you can. Of course you can. This monk takes the next step and says, hey, while we're walking, maybe you can explain to me where we're going. And Guisan says, shh, let's just walk. I love this encounter because for me anyway, it first lays bare something that's a little bit heartbreaking about the role of the teacher. But then if we think about it, if we do what we're supposed to do, which is to put ourselves in the position of the monk, in the position of the person asking the question, in the position of the person who is receiving this moment, it reveals something about what it is to be a student. It lays bare what we want. We want to be able to go to someone else and say, explain this to me, clarify this for me, spell it out. Right? Put this in a package that I understand, in language, in words, something I can write down and study, and memorize, and repeat. That isn't a stupid thing to want. That's the most human thing to want. And the danger in this relationship always is that the person in the teacher's seat might start to believe that they can do that. They might start to believe when a person comes and says, please explain it to me. Mm, yeah, I can explain that to you. When they do that, when they slip, they perpetuate 
this fundamental misunderstanding, making it even less likely that the student will ever understand how this works. It happens all the time. We sometimes say that there is no such thing as a teacher of Zen. And what we're talking about is what Guishan is saying to this monk. Zen teacher is not a job. Zen teacher is something more like a situation that someone finds themselves in and tries to work their way out of. And the student, if the student is present, if the student is paying attention, is watching the teacher try to worm their way out. to leave that teaching seat vacant so that there can be no confusion. It's really weird what we do. We take up this simple, simple thing and then we just spend a lifetime seeing all the ways that we can get it wrong. Until sometimes we trip on it. And we notice that nothing was missing. Nothing was lacking. Nothing was absent in explanation. There is nothing you will uncover after 50 years of practice that wasn't in front of you on the first day. That isn't in front of you right now. We can obscure it. We can distract ourselves from it. but we cannot take it away. That's our burden. That's Guishan's burden, and that's the monk's burden. And that's where I'll stop. <laughs>